Authors Tell All, a podcast by Shy Soul. She's bringing you author interviews, book discussions, and more. Stay tuned. everyone welcome to authors tell all i am your host shy soul we are here with alayda duncan how are you hi queen i'm good okay let's get into this so basically tonight's show will be about her of course we'll be talking about her books upcoming releases her tips and tricks of how she you know became an author how she got so far along in the industry any setbacks and we're about to get into that. So first, I want to talk about your book. How many books have you had out, do you have out so far? Well, so far, um, I have five books um, published. Uh, currently, I'm working on my sixth book. And um, I don't plan to stop, even though I've had a few uh, bumps in the road. But that's life, right? Life mm-hmm. is the greatest, yeah, life is the greatest teacher. And um, yeah, I'm just trying to keep going, girl. <laughs> Now, I might say her poetry is, oh my God, her poetry is so lovely. You guys know I love poetry. That's like one of my favorites. That's how I started out. Her poetry is, it's so like just loving. It it really speaks to me. So basically, um, what got you into wanting to write poetry? Um, um, growing up, um, I hope this isn't too personal, but I had a very tumultuous childhood. Um, I did grow up with both parents, but it was very, um, they had a very uh, volatile relationship. Um, I was abused as a child, physically, sexually, emotionally, um, but I did come from a spiritual background, mm-hmm. um, and I believe I just, you know, during that time when I was experiencing the abuse and things like that, I would go inside myself, and I would find, you know, something inside of me, which I now realize, which was my strength and my and my imagination is what led me into writing. It was like a, a safe place for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up going to the library. I started going to the library when I was like 12 years old. And I would always get 
that I started writing poetry around like 10. You know, doing like, yeah, doing like little snippets of little stuff because I always had a very rapid imagination, you know? Right. I'm a, being an artist, that comes into play too. So I express myself in both ways, mostly yes. drawing, but you know, writing just became so much of what I loved and now it's just a great big passion for me and then I get to talk to people like you who experience that as well right, so, yes. right. so um with all that that you have been through do you put a lot of that in your books yes girl I do um uh you know I try to not only speak from my point of view but also you know people that I've known throughout my life of uh, experiences that they've had you know uh, coupled with experiences that I personally had of course and what I do I just I just put it in a big pot like gumbo so when you read my books it's not just things that I've experienced but also people that I've met along the way thus far so I try to put everybody's experience into what I write so you know people can relate you know what I'm saying that's mm-hmm. what I try to base my art off of like what the people can relate to you know yes that's to me that's the best way an author should really do it because you know the experience that you have and you've had and you know you're going through that's all the emotion that you can put into your novel your series your short story right all of that is is what can really make the story come alive and give us the reader like oh my god like she went through something that I went through and that's just gonna give you more readers that you thought you would have and I love that exactly I love exactly. That. I do that um so what is the next step for you like what are the next phases of your books will you be dipping into other genres are you just going to stick in this genre what's going to happen next well you know um actually um i got (laughs) i'm going to get a little uh spiritual for a minute um Mm -hmm. actually back in 2016 i got i got baptized i mean even though i always had a special relationship with the supreme being who we call god you know this this extreme energy force that the creator is i've always had an intense relationship with the creator but you know during the time i decided to get baptized i was like in a very dark place in my life i was suicidal i felt you know uh, no one cared about me it was just Mm -hmm. a lot you know so i i found this church and um I've had struggles with my flesh, you know, doing what God wants me to do and doing what the later wants to do, which we as human beings, we all have that battle, you know, between, you know, the higher and lower self, which is the duality of life. You know, Mm -hmm. life would be nothing without good and evil. So it's, it's, you know, that is what creates life. But my purpose um, is to operate on a higher level, to operate in my higher self. So in the future, to answer your question, I would like to, you know, uh, write books that are that are like more of like a spiritual based, um, you know, more inspirational, something to motivate, you know, people who are struggling and mm-hmm. things like that and feel like, and, and, you know, people who feel like there's no way out of their situation because ultimately I would like to be used the way the creator would love to use me. Like I would love to be his tool. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I totally understand what you're saying. And I honestly, I respect that because, you know, with that, you could just utilize that in so many ways. You know, you can be a speaker of that, basically, you know, right. because it's so many people that are going through, you know, hard times. And, you know, they need those books. They need positive posts and all of that a mentor basically you sound like you would be a great mentor by the way that oh, sister, thank you <laughs> yes we need more authors like that like i'm really gonna have like a segment on this show where we speak on mental health because it's a lot of i talk to a lot of authors and inspiring authors who are going through minor issues like that and sometimes they don't know how to handle it and you know i'm i'm definitely that person that's like you know the pep talk and little things that they can do to you know give them a smile at least something that knows that someone cares about them that's the most thing and you know yes and when you're dealing with this industry you know you have certain people that you know 
will just say things and just bring you down and they don't know mentally what what you're going through. You know, you can't really rant to everybody because you don't know what they're going through inside. You know, they're just masking it. It's just a big mask. And then like, yeah, that's very, very important. Very, very important. So I would definitely buy those. I love self-help books. I would definitely, I would definitely get that. That is, that's a must. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Queen. I appreciate it. That's definitely a must. Now, as of that, would you like want to go into production? Like, sort of to say, like your own show, shows about your books, movies. Like, are you interested in that? Oh, girl, you asked the perfect question. Let me tell you, sister. Um, let me tell you, girl. Um, years ago, I've always been a fan of like scripts and writing scripts, and um, you know, uh, trendsetters like Oprah Winfrey and Spike Lee and John Singleton, just these great uh, African American pioneers that I that I loathed and looked up to. And um, lately, I've been on a, a uh, Oprah binge, and I just admire where she's come from and how she turned her pain into power and I I look at that and I'm like oh my goodness if I could just at least reach half of her you know uh, success because um I I feel she's such an inspiration and she's inspired me so much Mm -hmm. and yeah and with that being said girl I would love to get into like eventually even like doing what you're doing you know like podcast or you know um developing films or even if even if I'm not able to develop a film but get into like writing movie scripts or or plays or just you know because like you um we're, we're very much alike when it comes to creativity and when you have people like us who are creative I mean we are unstoppable like mm-hmm. we're infinite yeah we're infinite like what we can do is limitless so yes I definitely would like to broaden my horizons and get into you know more outlets to uh, to express my you know my artistry definitely <laughs> I love that I love when an author I I do I love when an author has more to give you know the reason I did this podcast and I say this all the time is because I love to talk to authors like you you know and I want every author to have a voice you know yes and it's kind of hard for us to you know get an interview you have to be a big author to you know get on a radio station and all that this is why I did this because it's authors like you to have so much to say and you know they may be doing things behind the scenes that we don't know and you want your readers and others to know what you're doing right you know social media isn't always I mean it's an outlet don't get me wrong but it isn't always the best route to go for promoting all the time you know you want more broader outlets Yes, and you know what, sister, let me interject for a minute because I have to um, piggyback on what you're saying. Listen, you took the words out of my mouth. Um, I I, I self-published my first book back in December 2018, and um, I didn't really get any notoriety, and I'm still, like, basically underlooked as an author, but I'm a great author, you know, when people actually give me a chance and they they read my work and, you know, my short stories and my poems, they, they actually like it. There's, like, wow. Wow, you're you're really dope. But it's like you said, um, we of course we know authors like, you know, Terry McMillan and, you know, the giants like Eric Jerome Dickey and Mary B. Morris and you know, people that who inspired us, but you know, they have their platform. But when I look at sisters like you and, you know, just uh, just other authors out there who are dope you know, dope authors, but we don't have that large platform like we should. So I commend you, sister, for what you, what you're doing for our community, and I and, the, and may the Most High bless you for your for your brand to expand because you are dope for this. I mean, I am so humbled that you allowed me on your show tonight. I give you many blessings. I give you many love and light, sister, for this podcast and what you're doing for the community because, you know, we we need it. Like, authors like me who are overlooked and undermined, this is the platform that we need, you know? So, Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Yes, I thank you. It's no problem at all because I love doing this because what I see, and I say this all the time, you know, some people... And this is not negative at all. Some people expect all of us 
urban authors to just have that niche where we just write the right. same things and you know what's on brand what's trending what's in the top 100 list on amazon and so on and so forth exactly all authors are not like that at all so right. when i talk to authors who want to publish they think that you know i love those books that's what's in now yes but is that truly what you want to write because that is what can bring you down like why isn't anybody you know reading my books like what you just right. said like what yeah. am i doing wrong you're not doing anything wrong you're not finding your group that is into what you're writing you're trying right. to go to people that are with the trend what's on right now what they've read before and don't get me wrong it's nothing wrong with that at all you can read whatever you want to read but as an right. author you need to find your true fan base who is exactly. into pure just romance you know uh -huh. without violence just pure just romance like oh my god they fell in love like that that type of writer you know then you have right. the thrillers you know, just this solid fan base that is truly into that. Then you have the readers like me who love all of it. Exactly. Yeah, I'm like that. I love every genre. <laughs> yeah. I definitely, definitely just give that advice. And me as, as an author of myself, I say, you know what? That's, and I'm speaking on myself too. I said, I really don't want to go into that. But I, me already knowing these things and how young I am and how I did research. Research is very important too, especially when you're trying to become an author or get published. Exactly. You need to know the things that you're diving into. Mm -hmm. the, especially when you're trying to write something different, research comes into play. Because if you don't know about what you're writing, you're going to have those people like, what is oh, she talking yeah. about? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Let me tell you, um, but I, um, it was this, uh, well, I have a novella out, so I, I don't just write poetry. Mm -hmm. um, well, my, my first two books were, were, were um, poetry books, but my third book was a novella, and my fourth book after that was a collection of erotic short stories. And what you were saying about research, girl, let me tell you, um, I, I, I'm, I'm 27, but I'm very old in spirit. I have a very old soul. Like, I love the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. So what I had to do for these short stories I cause first of all I based them like in different time periods like in the 1970s you know the 1990s and 1980s and so I had to literally go and research like the fashion of those decades the, the style the slang the lingo the music and I was like wow it took a lot like it really took a while for me to write that book I mean I completed it like in a month and a half but still that was the longest it ever took me to write a book because of all the research I had to do however it paid off because people who read the book they love it they love how I, I got it down like to you know to, to, to a T so research is a huge part of being an author if you don't have your research game down packed then you know you really need to work on your writing skills <laughs> exactly like right. you have a big point because i had to do a lot of research when i did a certain short story as well i went mm -hmm. complete and i say this all the time i went completely out of the box i said i'm gonna write in a male's point of view mm -hmm. and that was hard in itself because i'm like i don't really know how a male talks i don't know how he walks you know etc right. etc et i had to go to my male friends i had to go talk to male authors and people in that actual profession who's like what i read you did really good did you like what did you do before you wrote the first chapter i said i didn't do anything just yet i want to see what i could do first i was like okay but for the rest of the stuff definitely had to go on youtube had to read so many different articles and just all that stuff i have a book full of notes and i'm like yeah that was that was hard and i was like i love giving myself a challenge yeah, it, it, yeah, it's definitely a challenge, but let me tell you something. Um, I didn't even believe I was going to be able to finish that book, but you know, you know, writing is your calling when you're able to overcome that hurdle, when you think you're not able to finish a book or finish a scene. Listen, it's the motivation, and it's about pushing yourself, and once you you know overcome that hurdle and you have your finished product then you feel relieved and then it's like you know this is what you've been called to do you know so it's definitely worth it in the end i'm telling you because i was so relieved after i, I you know i did all of the research and then i was finished with 
you know, the final result, you know? Mm -hmm. So, it's definitely worth it. It really is. Now, my question is, and this is for a lot of authors who you know, they be trying to self-publish, but they just don't know how to, you know, they're kind of scared, they're nervous, they're thinking people right. aren't going to read their books, you know, all that. Right. So how was it for you when you self-published? I'm glad you asked, sister, because I have a, girl, okay, so you ready? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so like I mentioned earlier, I self-published back in December of 2018, and um, thanks, uh, shout out to uh, this sister named K.A. Williams. Uh, she's signed to a royalty publishing house. Um, you know, she's with Leo Sullivan and, you know, his wife. And I commend this sister because, you know, for years I was just letting time pass by, but I always knew I wanted to publish a book of poems. And then I finally reached out to her and she told me about, you know, Amazon and Kindle and um, Author Central on Amazon where you can set up your uh, author profile. She told me about Kindle Direct Publishing and I set up an account on there. I, um, you know, uh, I edited and formatted my own book and I was able to self-publish my first book. And then I was like, well, you know, maybe I should sign to a publisher so I can get more ex exposure because mm -hmm. when I released my first book, um, I didn't really get any notoriety. Like, the, the book did nothing on Amazon. So then I found this publisher. I'm not going to mention anyone's name. <laughs> I found this publisher, and I commend the sister. I, you know, she's well known in the author community. Um, she does a lot for her um, authors. I, I, I actually, I admire her a lot. I admire her work ethic. But um, I felt, I felt like I wasn't recognized when I was signed to her, and I just felt like my creativity was too much. And, but actually, I was the first poet signed to her, and it was because of me that she added a poetry drama, you know, a, uh, a poetry genre to her um, publishing company. Now she's signing other poets, and I, I felt some kind of way because I noticed my style was being bitten because no one writes poetry like me, like, no offense, but the way I'm able to twist my words and, you know, dissect words in my poems, no, no one was writing like that, and so it was this other poet that she signed and I saw the girl was biting my style and they were praising her so I was like wait a minute and then it, and then I just felt like I was being overlooked and I'm like man they're biting my style I'm like what is this and so you know to make a long story short you know the sister and I we parted ways and she let me go back in May of this year and um I let it go because, like I said, it's no bad blood. I respect the sister. I think she's a queen. I think she's a goddess. And, you know, I admire her work. And it's no disrespect to the sisters that signed to her, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I wish I wish bad on no one, you know. But it was, it was a learning lesson. And God just showed me that, Alayda, you're too great to be confined to a publishing company. Like, if anything, you should be, like, the publisher. You should, you know, you know, like, you should be the one, you know, publishing your own books. But I did it because I wanted to get known in the community, and I wanted to, you know, be around other sisters who are in this writing community with me, because I love women. I love black women. I think we're beautiful. But it didn't work out. So, um, back in uh, May, you know, she took all all of my books down on Amazon, so all of my reviews and everything were gone because mm -hmm. I published two books under her. So I was hurt when she took my books down, but within a three-week time period, I found a way to put all of my books back up on Amazon, and shortly after that, I published my third book, which was the novella, and it was hard. I, I, was, I was hurt, girl. I was like, wow, man, she snatched my books off of Amazon, all of my reviews gone, you know? It hurt so bad, but... I, I, I took it, and um, it made me stronger, and like like I mentioned earlier, sister, now I'm working on my sixth book, you know, so I, to, this is what I want to say to anyone out there um, who's ever experienced something like that, or anyone who's looking to publish, you know, to self-publish, you can do it, you know, and this is no disrespect to publishers, because I respect the hustle, I, I respect, you know, what, what you do, but if, if you're able to self-publish, then do it. And don't have second thoughts about, well, I'm not going to be known. Listen, if it's God's will, if it's the creator's will, he will lead you where you need to be. You will get noticed because every book that I've released thus far, sister, has, has, has peaked at number one. So it's possible, you know, and I'm still not a known author, but obviously I have certain people who support me. 
and I'm thankful for that. So anybody out there who's afraid, uh, you know, about self-publishing, don't be afraid. Just step out on a limb. You know, like I said, you can go to Kindle Direct Publishing on Amazon, set up an account, set up an account on Author Central on Amazon, and go for it. You know, do not be afraid. <laughs> exactly. Everything you said, I totally agree because... <laughs> You know, you're not the only author that's been through certain things like that. And sorry that happened to you because that's that's totally not fair because you worked on something that you love and you put a lot of dedication into it and then it takes for that to happen. So basically, she's a success story. I don't care if she doesn't have, you know, the 100 reviews. I've read her books and her books are very good. So thank you. Thank you, Queen. Because me, if I was to self-publish, I already knew how to do it. I already know how to do all of that stuff. I made sure to, you know, to learn before I even got a publisher. The reason I don't self-publish is because I'm in school and I'm like, you know what? That's a lot. And plus, I do all this other stuff too. I'm just going to get a publisher. I'm just going to find a right publishing home and, you know, just go off right. about it from there. Plus, there's still a lot right. of things that I can learn too. And I have no problem with that. I love critique. I yeah, I tell my publisher all exactly. the time. Yes, I tell him all the time. Just give me the rundown. Exactly. I don't care if she says the story is absolute, needs a rewrite, it's not good. <laughs> Just let me, don't have me thinking that the story is the best story ever. And uh-huh. then it gets put out and then it's just a whole bunch of negative comments and one stars. Like, did she even write this the right way? You know, things like that. Right. Let me know if the story isn't where it needs to be. And I will work 10 times harder, stay up and write and edit. Right. Yeah, um, I agree. With my novella, um, I had to go back and, you know, um, because I, you listen, when I, when I first started writing, um, I never really thought to like really proofread, you know, like I would just write a book and, and, and that's it. Mm-hmm. But what my publisher um, did teach me is that, you know, it's important to, you know, you know, proofread your work, you know, go over your work. And I'm glad she taught me that because it stuck with me. So with my novella, you know, um, cause you know, it's nothing for me to write poems, but you know, when you're actually creating a story with characters, it's important that you proofread everything cause you can make a lot of errors and mistakes. So with my novella girl, I had to go back and, you know, um, you know, edit and, you know, proofread because it was a, um, it was a, um, reader who read the book and she loved the story she was in love with the story however she did make it clear yeah you know you had a few mistakes in there but overall it was a a a great book so I didn't get offended you know what I did I went back I edited the entire book and now you can read it smoothly with no errors and it taught me a lesson so now with everything that I do I don't care how many days it takes me to proofread a book I do it because I really want people to have a smooth read I don't want them to you know experience any mistakes or anything like that if, if you're paying for something I want you to enjoy it I don't want you to get anything excuse my French half-assed you know mm-hmm. so yeah girl I'm, I'm I agree with you a thousand percent critique is the best teacher it really I totally agree and I do I wish you furthermore and for more of your books to flourish and everything that you want to accomplish because we need to be supportive of each other because you know I, I one thing I can't stand is when people think that oh they just own you know these certain readers no, right, they're yeah. reading totally different stories, you know. You, you can't get mad about that because it's so many books that come out on Amazon every day. You can't exactly. always hold that number one spot. Exactly. Yeah. <sighs> Those are just like the main things that just irks me. I'm like, it's I have so many authors on my page and I share as much as I can all of their books because, you know, they, they're dropping so many books every day so when people do certain things like that it's called a marketing strategy too to you know defer off of their book because you guys have might have the same release date and it's just so much it's so much with the urban industry that's just ridiculous and that's that's definitely another big question what do you think about our writing community the urban book industry 
glad you asked me that because I'm very observant. Um, and me being, you know, uh, knowledgeable of our history and where we come from and what we've been through, we are so much more than the animosity that we had towards each other. You know, I love my people. I think we're beautiful. We're the original people. So we're very special. We are a very special people. And when I look at the, no offense to any races, but when I look at the Caucasian community, um, they don't seem to have that many disputes and, you know, hiccups in their community when it comes to, you know, writing. You know, they support one another, you know, and it's, it's not a big deal, but I don't know why with our people it has to be, you know, jealousy and, you know, drama. Like, we have to rise above that, you know. It's, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, you know, how we've been here since, you know, the 1600s because of slavery or whatever. And then all of a sudden you see these immigrants come in, like you have the Italian and then they set up Little Italy. Then you have the Chinese, and they set up Chinatown, and then you have the Korean hair stores. They make all these millions of dollars off of black women, and then you have the Indians, and they set up stores in our community. It's like, wow, why is it that our people, why can't we pull together like that, you know? If we could just learn to come together and operate, you know, on one accord, you know, master our higher selves and do what we need to do, you know, generate revenue in our community, support one another, because whether you go number one or I go number one or that sister over there goes number one, who gives a crap? Yo, we made it. Like, one of us is making it. You know, we can build off of one another. We can build up each other. So, I, um, but I, I do feel, I, I have hope for us, though. I have hope for us as a people, as especially in the author community. I feel that one day we, we will reach that plateau. We just have to, you know, fix some of our issues within ourselves because sometimes what we project is actually a reflection of our inner being, you know. So I think once we get, you know, once we fix the core of ourselves, the root of our problems, I feel, we'll, I feel that we will be able to operate on one accord and, you know, support one another the way that we're supposed to. Because when I see a sister doing good, hey, I support them 1,000% because it's about love. You can't fight hate with hate, you know. Love will overcome anything. So I, it, it is a shame that it has to be this back and forth and the cattiness and the drama. But, you know, like if you experience that or if I experience that or if, or if someone who's listening right now experienced that, just just let it go, forgive, and just realize, hey, this is my sister, you know, F all the BS, hey, we're going to overcome this. Ultimately, it's about, you know, getting more black authors known, you know, that's the main goal, because like if one of us make it, we all make it, you know, if it wasn't for people that we looked up to, like the Richard Wrights and the Langston Hughes, the Maya Angelos, like where would be? we be right now you know what i mean so, mm -hmm. so like they yeah like they broke down doors for us and so now it's up to us the new generation to open up doors for the little kids out there who, who are going to be you know the next up and coming author so so i feel like if one of us make it we all make it we just have to learn to work together what you think <laughs> very true i am I am agreeing with all that, and that is so yeah. true, because everything you said, there's pretty much nothing for me to even say against that, because it's all true. That's things I've been saying, and I've been wishing that other authors can see that, because they just want us to be in a box. I refuse yeah, to box. be in a box. Right. Let me be a circle or something, mm -hmm. so I can be able to branch out and write other amazing stories. And exactly. do other amazing things. Can I do that? Uh-huh. As an author? See, yeah. And see, I love, like, what you were speaking about earlier. I swear, girl, I love your mind. You have a very beautiful mind. Like, I observe you on social media, and I'm like, this sister is really... You're going to be big. I, I do see that for you. Um, you're going to be very huge in the author community. I, I see you expanding. I just really get that energy and that vibe from you. And I, I just commend you for everything that you've accomplished and what you will accomplish in the future. But what you were saying about the different genres... Yes, like, we're not just, you know, erotic authors. We're not just, oh, you know, my thug, you know, baby daddy type authors. No, I listen, girl, I, I, I'm a weirdo at, at core. Like, I love science. I love, you know, like, I love uh, suspense. I love horror. 
you know, like I love stuff dealing with like, you know, witchcraft. Like I want to see like more books about, you know, black witches. Like I want to see more books about, you know, the spiritual experience of someone struggling, you know, with their innermost demons. Like I, I want to expand. Like I love science fiction. Like why, why, do, why do we just have to be in a box? Like you said, like why can't we broaden our horizons, you know, as authors and as readers as well? You know what I'm saying? Like, we're more than that. Like, we're more than just, you know, romance authors. You know, like, we're astronauts, we're scientists, we're all of that and more, you know? So, you know. (laughs) Exactly. And I've said that on my podcast before. Like, can't we have more black magic and Mm -hmm. witches and all these other different storylines and plots? Exactly. And just instead, I mean, you could do a lot of things with a thug story. You can make that into a vampire. You can make that into anything and have them like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. You know, little things like that you can you can do. Most mm-hmm. definitely you can do that. Not just the same boy meets girl, heart gets broken, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just little things like that. That That's what I really be wanting to see. And, and I have so many authors on my page who do have so many different stories and different angles to them i'm like finally you know but it should be more than just a few exactly more than a few you're right definitely more than a few definitely because you know and the other quote unquote other um writers you know Uh do they give them just the singularity of exactly they're no, coming up no. with so many different stories and they may be doing the same kidnap or whatever. But if you look at Lifetime, <laughs> Lifetime is making so much money off of those stories because those those stories are endless. They're timeless. Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with that. And I just love that. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to write a story like that one day. But, you know, with our color, you know, we can we can make good stories and movies like that. But it's just choose not to, I can kind of say. We just exactly but you know what it comes from though it comes from fear it comes from fear um they i guess they kind of like with me when i decided to write that novella um and the title of it is called satan you can't have my marriage mm-hmm. and it, it, deal, it deals with witchcraft and i'm i'm from you know uh the low country part of south carolina i'm what you would call geechee gala and as you know um on the coast of south carolina where i come from that's actually where the first slave ships came to america when they dropped the slaves off so where i'm from they have a lot of witchcraft craft in the background you know voodoo hoodoo um a lot of spirituality so in the book i incorporated that it was about this woman and her husband uh the devil was fighting their marriage and witchcraft was involved you know infidelity uh secrets things like that mysticism and i'm not gonna lie at first i was a little nervous because i'm like okay how would people feel about reading about you know root working and voodoo but i was like you know what just write it later and then when people actually read the book they love it you know so i think we have to again what you said um you're really hitting on a lot of stuff tonight because it's like you said being confined to that box no sister you have to get out of that box write what you feel is best to write because you never know like what it's going to do for your audience you never know what it's going to do for your reader you know you're you're afraid to write something and you might not know like that's exactly what people have been waiting for to read so again we have to you know expand you know like do do not shun do not box in your creativity because if you do you're gonna go mad Mm -hmm. you're gonna go mad if you do yeah exactly and what you uh, everything you said those are things that i think as well i'm like Mm -hmm. if i've watched the craft more than 10 times <laughs> if i've watched hocus yes if i've watched hocus pocus hocus pocus since i was little and i fell in love with witches and you know i got into loving greek mythology i love i pure love all of that stuff you know and and I'm like, all I have to do is just do further research, and I can write yeah. a story like that with no problem, especially a witch story, witchcraft. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. the the voodoo and all of that stuff. Not in a weird way, but like in a book yeah, way, I know, love all that. That's where we come from. That's, mm-hmm. that's what we come from. You know, as a people back in, you know, Africa, you know, uh, 
uh, voodoo was a part of our religion. Of course, um, you know, the Most High, he doesn't really agree with that because he's a jealous God. But if we're going to be honest, that is what we come from. We as black people in the Caribbean, you know, in the islands. And I know a lot of Latinos don't like to say that they're black, but they're black. You know, they have African ancestry as well because of slavery. So in black people in America, that is what we come from. We come from voodoo. That that is that that's in us. That is the magic in us, you know. So it's a part of who we are, you know. So hey, I, I think that you know we shouldn't be ashamed to write about it. You know, I mean, it's it's in our blood. It's it's in our blood. Like I mean, this this is who we are, you know. So. Sister, I, I say that people shouldn't box themselves in. You know, we have to, we have to, you know, let the creativity come out because I, I view creativity as like many different colors. You know, many different colors, and who wants to settle with being bland? Like, who just mm-hmm. wants black or white? You know, who just wants black or white? No, I want every color of the rainbow and in between and then some. <laughs> yes, that's exactly my brother. He said that to me. He was like. Are you going to write, you know, any fantasy books or anything like that? Because he's a big, he was a big fan of Harry Potter and Star Wars oh, and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, me too. Um, so he definitely asked, he said, are you going to write any books like that? I was like, yes, I am. He was like, I just want to say one thing. He said, don't make it too black. And he said it in the most <laughs> nice way possible. He said, because when you watch that, he said, tell me what you saw when you watched it with me. I was like, you know, I seen it all types of colors in the movie. He was like, exactly. So why would you just yeah. make your book just one color? Exactly. I was like, yeah, yeah you have a big point. I said, I, I said, you have a very big point. Very, very big point. And I was like, I wasn't going to just, you know, just make all the characters. Because I was like, that wouldn't really, you know, you want other races to pick up your book too. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It, 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 it broadens your audience, you know. It does, yeah. Yeah, and he's read some of my books. He was like, he was like, you do have a wild imagination. So I'm not gonna say about anything else, but he's like, you have a wild imagination. So he was like, I can't wait till you come out with those books because he said those are definitely gonna be definitely the ones that I would gravitate to and really yes. want to be like my sister. She gonna be she wrote a Harry Potter book, but you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah, you're yeah. definitely, you're definitely a force to be reckoned with, and you, and you're young, you know. Like I'm 27, I was born in '92, but you're, you're young, you know. And what I can pick up, like, is that you have an old soul as well, and you're, you're just bursting with creativity, you know. Like you, you have to either be like a, a Pisces, a Gemini, or something, because I'm a Pisces, and I know Pisces, Gemini's, we're very creative. And even if you're not, you must have that somewhere in your birth chart. <laughs> I I am a Capricorn. Oh, yeah. Well, Capricorns, they're very creative, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the reason I brought my brother into that aspect, because he's a Pisces. So, mm-hmm. we definitely go back and forth. And he was like, well, why don't you do this? And he was like, you were already thinking of that? I was like, yeah, you should check out my yeah. notebook. My notebook is full of different book ideas that I can't wait to finish writing or already started writing. And I already pitched half of them to my publisher. He was like, I don't care. He was like, I know you got some great ideas. Just send it to me. I'll send it to the editor and we'll go on from there. He said, you can write whatever you want to write. I was like, That's yes. right. That's right. Because you're definitely changing the game, sister. You really are. And I commend you for that. Thank you. And yes. there's one thing that I'm really working on. And I want the book to just... You know, like I was saying earlier, I told my publisher, I don't care if the book needs a rewrite or whatever, because this book is really, really important to me. It's about mental health, like I, like you said earlier, I, but I just didn't bring it up. You know, it's about mental health and, you know, what young people go through and aspects where they go through in their family that people don't know. And exactly. I wrote that book when I was around 16, 17. So... Wow. My mom, she loves to read. I say this on my podcast every time. She's the one that really got me into loving books so much. So I may be like, Mom, let me read this book to you. You know, right. we still do that. I don't care. I'm 22. I still read books to my mother. I sure <laughs> do. Um, and I was like, Mom, let me read you my book. She was like, yeah, go ahead. So spent the whole day of me reading this 70K book to her. And wow. me and her both had tears in our eyes. She was like, before you say anything. She was just pointing me and said, how did you write that story? I was like, I don't know. It just came to me. She was like, who was the story about? 
She was like, do you know someone that's been through? I was like, mom, I don't know anybody who went through this. It was just an idea in, in my brain. It was like, shy, you need to write something like this. That was just the only thing I had. The only thing I was like, you need to write something like this because it's young girls like you that's been through this. So exactly. I just got to writing. Mm -hmm. Just put the whole heart and soul into that book and just went at it. And yes. that was the first book that ever made me so emotional. I was like, wow, this is the only book I have to really have to give my character a happy ending. Because truly me uh, as a writer... I really don't truly believe in happy endings because everybody yeah. isn't perfect. Nobody yeah. is perfect yeah. at all. <laughs> Nobody. You know, you can hide it all you want through through your Maybelline, through your money, and all. Mm -hmm. It's not happiness. Yeah, it's not happiness. And see, that is that's what's wrong with society and whole. Not just, you know, our readers or us as authors. It's society, the mask that we wear. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a mask that we all put on, you know. And let me tell you something, what you were saying about when you was writing that book, um, even though it was hard for you. And listen, I, I wrote a story one time that was really hard for me to finish. But, you know, you have to, no matter how much it hurts us, because these are stories that needs to be told. Because exactly. if we don't be the, yes, because you know what we are as writers? We're the voice of our communities. We really are. We're the voice, and we can be the hope for someone out there who may be suicidal, you know, or, or who may be about to lose their job, or some single mom, or some single father. You never know. Like, you just never know. So, yeah, I say that we as authors, we stand, you know, we are one person, but we stand as many beings. Because for us to be able to have a mind that's able to birth so many different characters, that lets you know that we're bursting with creativity. Like, we're bursting with art. You know, so we do not walk alone. You know, we have so much inside of us. So I, I could, like, again, I, I could never, you know, stop what I'm doing because even days when, well, we all feel like this. Oh, I don't, I don't really want to finish this book. I don't feel like it. But you know what? You have to find that drive to finish you know what you've started because again you know if we don't exercise our talents it can be taken away you know and we could run the risk of not you know reaching our full potential as being an inspiration to someone out there because you never know I always say this you never know who's going to pick up your book one day and it's, it's, and it's going to change their life mm -hmm. you know so yeah girl. exactly exactly <laughs> This was such a tremendous... This wasn't even an interview, guys. I say this all the time. <laughs> I trick you guys all the time. These are never really interviews. These are big book author talks. That's yes. all they are. And definitely going to have these be more like this. You know, yeah. nice yeah. and calming where we all can just come through that's why i say you guys can come through and flood me with messages that you want me to ask your favorite author you know <laughs> so you can be like oh my god i knew it or wow you know that's what this is about now yes. um at this time you get to shout out anybody you want to um and you get to mention a author that you want to hear on the podcast next because i'll be in your inbox i'll send them a friend request <laughs> immediately you know um, you know what, um, first, um, I'll, uh, you know, just give a list of all of my books so far in case anyone is interested. If it's not a problem, you know, if it's not a problem. Um, my first book is called Wordplay, a potion named Poetry. Mm -hmm. My second book is called Gumbo, Potent Poetry and Parables. My third book, which is the novella, is called Satan, You Can't Have My Marriage. My fourth book, which is an erotica collection of short stories, is entitled Secrets Under My Tongue. My most recently published book, my fifth book, um, is called Tongues Enter My Ethos. It's a collection of short poems and monologues. And the book that I'm working on now um, is a collection of erotic poems, which will have a short story featured at the end. 
Um, as far as who I would love to hear on here, um, K.A. Williams. Um, I will have to send you her information, but she's pretty popular in the community. So, uh, so in the community, so I'm pretty sure you already know of her. But I just think she's a beautiful soul. Um, also, another sister. Um, she's an erotic author. Um, India T. Northfleet. Um, I love her work. Um, let me see who else. Oh, it's, it's it's so many. I can't even think right now. I can't even think. But those two definitely. And for anyone that I'm missing, please forgive me because I admire all of the sisters. Um, I, I look up to you all. You all are an inspiration to me and many others. And again, I just love that sisterhood and that community. And I just really wish one day all of us can come together and just you know continue to lift one another up because that's where the strength and the power lies. Um, and what was the other question, sis? I'm sorry. <laughs> I got caught up. <laughs> that was absolutely everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But um, I thank you for having me on tonight. And again, sister, I, couldn't, I commend you for everything, you're, everything that you're doing and what you will continue to do. And I do see so many great things ahead of you. So when you become a millionaire, don't say that I didn't warn you that it was going to happen. Um, I, I think you are a blessing. I think you are a bright star and you will continue to shine, sister. So you keep doing what you're doing because you're, 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 you're exceptional. You're exceptional. You definitely are. Thank you. I <laughs> cannot wait to have you back on the show. So I will definitely be in your inbox again when I see you drop about a new book. I <laughs> Trust me, I will. Because that would be a lovely, epic book discussion. Thank you. Thank you, sister. I appreciate it. It's no problem. I love you guys. She definitely loves you guys. Have a nice night. Bye. Bye. <laughs> doing the book ed um every day i have a podcast and it is again kiki glover with her book creeping on the low that book is amazing guys i finished it the book is the bomb you guys really 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 need to get her book that book is wonderful um i'll just give a minor little snippet uh, like I did last time, but just, you know, just a little, just a little briefing. Um, her book is raving right now. You guys need to go download it, buy it, Kindle Limit, get it for free. Um, leave her review. She definitely, definitely did her, she definitely did her work on this. Um, one part that I want to read is the end of her synopsis that really caught me. When he reveals that he is feeling filing sorry guys filing for divorce from monica everything he'd ever worked for was put at stake friendships are tested and family ties could be severed forever that's the risk you take when you're creeping i love i i love that so much this book i'm telling you guys this book is five star you need to get it it's available on amazon you, just, just do it the book is amazing love you guys bye Tell All, a podcast by 
Shy Souls. She's bringing you author interviews, book discussions, and more. Stay tuned.